Hello and welcome to another episode of Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics with me, Oddworld Inhabitant, as your host. So throughout the series so far, we've explored uh, how to make Imperial Guard competitive again. We've sort of touched upon these issues of you need massive infantry in a competitive meta. There's going to be too many D weapons and haywire and other shenanigans for your tanks to survive. We've also talked about how we want to load those infantry out generally keep them cheap, few upgrades when necessary but always in moderation and we've also talked about who, what we want, what kind of advisors we want leading them, commissars, priests, psychers, where, where do we fall on these issues. But now we need to talk about HQ choices because these arguably are what make the infantry army actually actually function. For any of you who have collected Imperial Guard foot armies before or those of you who have had maybe Tyranid armies or Orc armies it always falls up there's no point in having this massive amount of basic infantry it always falls apart without your leaders and this is especially true of the Imperial Guard so it's very important to get the leaders right so we'll start off with the first HQ choice uh, which is just in this from the book it's which is Commissar Yarrick Commissar Yark is potentially uh, very good. He is 145 points. He comes with a plethora of war gear, special rules, heirlooms. Um, I'm not actually going to go into him too much uh, because I will say he's a solid do not take. He's just too expensive still. At the end of the day, yeah, he's, you know, he's strength 6 with that power claw. He's toughness 4. Yeah, he's got all he's got all this these great things, but he is just too expensive. You know, he he is he's basically a platoon with a grenade launcher and every squad on his own, and he whilst he can give orders and he has things like iron will, so if he dies, he gets back up again. He is just genuinely too expensive. I would he's not terrible. He's not a terrible choice. He is basically. A company command squad and a Lord Commissar rolled into one. But he still is just slightly too expensive. Okay. So I would I would say he's, he, he, he can be used. He is not unusable. But he is he is like a B a B choice. He's not an A star. Okay? So use him if you want to, but otherwise there are more efficient choices out there, more versatile choices. So the next one we're going to talk about is the Company Command Squad. And the Company Command Squad is an A-star choice. If you are running a competitive Imperial Guard army and you're going for pure infantry or infantry heavy, if you have any, almost any infantry in your army at all, you want a Company Command Squad. These guys are super versatile. They are the backbone to your order system. They do everything and more. So... A company command squad comes with one company commander who's got a fairly, for guard, for guard fairly impressive stat line. Um, and you get four veterans as well. And on top of that, you can tag on a load of regimental advisors, which are, which are different to normal advisors. Normal advisors are your commissars, your preacher psychers. Regimental advisors are additional characters that you can buy for your company command squad. And they can't leave the company command squad. So, bare bones, this unit comes in at 60 points. It actually can work bare bones, but I recommend that you take advantage of the fact that everyone in the squad has Blizzard Skill 4. So, this is a good place to put a last cannon. My favourite loadout for the Company Command Squad is Officer with a Bolter, a regimental standard who has a las gun a last cannon team and a sniper a sniper i can say honestly that's just there normally because i have if i'm buying bolters a lot of my sergeants i'll have two points left over um so it's quite good there's nothing wrong with having a sniper it Split is skill 4, it can rend, it, it's alright. It, it's only 2 points. I know you have to be very, very careful to squeeze every point. 
but it is worth it than having a random lads gun guy in the squad. It is worth having that sniper. Um, down the, you might say, well, what about plasma? What about melter? What about flamethrowers, heavy flamers, grenade launchers? Um, the reason you don't want any of those weapons is they're actually just too short ranged. This squad, your company command squad, with your last cannon, your sniper, and your regimental standard, they have one job. It should sit in cover, preferably a ruins, high up, protected by a platoon all around them, and to sit in cover, issue orders, and snipe with the last cannon. Okay? Blizzard skill 4 last cannon, you can put, bring it down on yourself, uh, and you don't need, to, if you've got, you know, psychers running around handing out prescience, you don't really need to put prescience on a Blizzard skill 4 unit. I mean, you know, Sod's Law will say, even though it's with skill 4, it's going to miss every single time. You know, that's just how it seems to roll. But, you know, realistically, statistically, um, you're better off putting that uh, prescience on a big blob of 4 LAS cannons than on a one single Blizzard skill 4 LAS cannon. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's uh, the sniper. Again, it's got longer range. There's no, it's, there's no point in having a... There's no point in having a, a melter gun in there. Either the melter gun kind of complements the uh, las cannon. We've talked before about this melter hedge idea where you las cannon things, then when they get close, you melt a gun, or as you advance, you eventually get to melt a gun them. You, this thing, this squad's going to be sitting at the back. And 10 points for what is essentially the last dude who is the sacrificial dude. He always put the sniper guy at the front. You always put the, or if you don't buy the sniper, the random las gun guy at the front. Because he's the first one that's going to get chipped off. You don't want to be putting a 15-point plasma gun there because the first guy that dies is the one with the 15-point gun or the 10-point gun. Flamers don't complement your las guns. Grenade, uh, las cannon, grenade launcher doesn't complement your las cannon. That's why we don't take those two. Um, you can also take a medipack. Cost, if it costs 5 points, I'd recommend you take it. Unfortunately, it costs 15 points. And it gives you feel no pain, which can be quite good because imagine you're sat and you fall ruin, and then you can go to ground potentially. You know, you can you can put camo cloaks on this unit. You could go to ground for a two up cover save, and then top of that, you've got feel no pain. Um, the problem is, is that feel no pain is cancelled out by anything that causes instant death. So any of these scatter bikes that are roaming around, you don't get your feel no pain. Any of the, um, you know, riptides flying around. You don't get your feel no pain. So honourable mention. So you heard me there. So you can you can get camo cloaks and put those on top of your go to ground, and then you have a two of cover save. I actually wouldn't recommend taking camo cloaks. That's two points a model, um, and to be honest, it, it's not that useful most of the time. If something really wants to clean company command squad, it's going to kill it. And especially if you go to a tournament where you're going to be facing Riptide after Riptide, uh, they're just going to SM all they'll do is SMS Smart Missile System you to death. They won't even bother. They'll just go Riptide double fire. If you're in the Riptide wing, quadruple fire. I'm just going to shoot my missiles at you. And one Riptide out of the five to nine, they're going to be rocking. It's just going to kill you, your uh, your commander. So dope. So. Keep them back, keep them out of line of sight if you have to, and don't bother spending too much on the carapace armor or the crack grenades or the camo gear. It's just wasted points. What we've got to what you've got to remember is, if something really wants to kill a five man toughness three unit, they'll do it. So spend your points wisely on this. Okay. I, t in terms of talking about protecting these units, I actually don't tend to buy them a Chimera. I know a lot of people say it's a must have. Uh, I run pure infantry. That means no Chimeras. Um, simple as it gets. Honorable mention to um, advisors that can be taken you have the Astropath, the Master of the Fleet, uh, the Master of Ordnance, and the Officer of the Fleet. Astropath is a level 1 Psyker. Don't bother. He's twenty. He's twenty-five points for level one psychic, so he's not bad. Um, but he can't get access to divination, so there's no real point in taking him. Uh, my my recommendation is if you've got three primary psychers and you don't want to ally in any more psychers, 
you want to stick to pure guard, uh, he's the only way to get an additional one to two warp charges. Because don't forget, you can take two complete command squads and a CAD, two astropaths, plus three from a psychers, all maxed out. You've got eight warp charges off the bat. It's not a lot, it's not great. It could be, you know, the amount of psychic dice that demons can put out there, that elder can put out there, but eight psychic dice, eight master levels will actually do all right. You'll be able to hold your own. Uh, Officer of the Fleet. In, pa in additions gone by, he was almost an auto include. He automatically minus one to your enemy's um, reserves, plus one to your own reserves. Now, uh, he has to roll on the leadership test, and unfortunately, it is, has to be his leadership, and he's a leadership seven, so he is basically a waste of time. Do not bother, and you only get to choose one or the other. So, do not bother with the officer of the fleet. Master of the Ordnance. Um, yes, basically. Uh, if you have 20 points to spare, always take him. If you can fit, because whilst he does scatter massively, uh, he's only 20 points. He's one of the cheaper uh, of the one of the chief advisors. He's only 20 points. He is a, he is a 20 point basilisk. Yes, he scatters 3d6. Yes, if he even if you even if you get a direct hit, he scatters 2d6. Still, it just goes in the little little hour instead of the, one of the big ones. Okay, but he can manage it if he can see it. He can manage his ballistic skill, which is ballistic skill four. So, you know, if you have direct line of sight and you have uh, and you get a direct hit and you only get a low scatter, you're still going to be doing great. And one trick I love to do is to put fire on my target on the company command squad and then your music massive ordnance and just don't, you know, I ha and just wham, strength nine, AP three, ignores cover. You might if one once a game, once every two games, you'll get that look, you'll get that money shot. It is worth it. I find, I find he tends to make his points back. He only has to kill one to two space marines over six turns to get his points back. When you put it that way, it's not too bad. Now I touched on something there. I've been touching on this. Uh, the main reason to take company command squads is, isn't the loadout, isn't the advisors. It's for your orders. Company command squads are your only source of senior officer orders, which means they're the only source of the two most important orders out there, which is fire on my target and bring it down. So you, that's why you always need your company command squad. Because there's no good in taking 200 infantry, no point in taking you know, all these lads cannons, these missile launchers and auto cannons in your blobs if you can't order them to tank hunter, if you can't order them to ignore cover. Hell, if you can't order, you know, there's a few, there's, there's nine orders out there you can choose from. With the with the senior command squad, you have a choice of nine orders. It's very much worth it. So without getting hung up on company command squads, it's going to be almost a, a whole video on company command squads at this point. Um, the special characters, Lord Castle and Creed, don't bother. He's 80 points, too expensive. I don't care if he comes with two... Hotshot pistols. I don't care if it comes to two Wardlord traits. He, he used to be an auto include because he could scout any any model. Yes, you could scout a Bane Blade. You could outflank a Bane Blade. Uh, now it it just does it's just not worth it. So don't bother with him. Colour Sergeant Kel, uh, even more terrible. Just just don't use him. Seventy five points for what is essentially a two wound veteran who is slightly okay in close combat. We've already expressed our opinion. I've already expressed my opinion on close combat. Don't try and make guard good at close combat. They'll die. If any, anything dedicated to close combat comes up to Color Sergeant Kel, he's dead. So don't bother. Uh, Colonel Ironhand Strachan. If he was way cheaper, he's 130 points. And he's great. He comes with so many cool rules and everything. But it's 130 points. He is the price of he is more than the price of two company command squads. And he doesn't do anything any better. At the end of the day, he still only issues two orders. Yeah, he can punch the shit out of things. But if you've got to the point where your company command squad is in close combat, it doesn't matter if there's com Colonel Ironhand Strachan there and every everyone's equipped with every close combat weapon you can get. Most of the time, if your company command squad gets into close combat, it's five models 
Hot four out of five, of which are T3. Sorry, no. Nork Dead Dog, ugh, I've never seen anyone use him. I've never used him. Uh, it's eight, it's, you're paying 85 points for one Ogre in at the end of the day. Um, no. So I can't, I, I honestly have all the company commander HQ, uh, all the company command squad special characters. I can't honestly recommend a single one of them. Okay, they're too expensive. At the end of the day, what you want your company command squad doing is sitting back in ruins, setting up a little command post, shooting out last cannon shots out of a fucking window, calling down artillery strikes, uh, waving the flag around. You know, tr I mean, I tried to keep my company command squads about 100 points. If I could, but less if I can do, you know, if I, if I'm, if I'm splashing out a little bit, I'll, you know, I'll go for that, go for the extra hundred points. So we've got left quickly. We need to talk about the tank commander with Knight commander Pask and the Lord Commissar. They're the last two we need to talk about. Okay. So let's just turn over the page and have a quick look. Right. So first off tank commanders. Tank commanders are actually really good. You're probably going to be surprised to hear me say that. Um, because obviously I, I'm, I've, I've said many, many times that the series, pure infantry is the only way to go. Uh, yeah. If, if tanks weren't so bad, and remember when the first, when the guard codex first came out, everyone was running tank commanders. And it was the basic tank commander himself isn't really worth it but knight commander pask is worth it knight commander pask comes you have to pay 40 points in total for him uh, sorry 70 points because you pay 30 for the tank commander then you pay 40 points to upgrade his knight commander pask so tank commanders essentially what they do is you have to buy two lehman rusters one for the tank commander to be in and then you have to buy him what I nicknamed the bodyguard tank. Okay. So you have to buy him a bodyguard tank. You can't run him on his own solo. Okay. And what he does is he gives you Blitz Skill 40 tank, which is great. He gives you crack shot, which is fantastic. It lets you re-roll armor penetration rolls. Uh, and he also gets old grudges, which means he's preferred enemy. So you Blitz Skill 4, you're re-rolling one, so you you almost you're almost twin linked. And then when you shoot in fleshy things, you're re-rolling ones again, which is great. And if you're shooting vehicles, no matter what the gun is, you are you are um, you're re-rolling armor penetration results. Now, in the fluff, you meant to put your tank commanders in vanquishers, but vanquishers are crap. Okay, I'm not going to go. I'm going to do a video in a series later on about if you want to take tanks, which ones to go for. Most guard players already know that's going to be more for, you know, newer players. But Knight Commander Pask, something which a lot of people don't take into account, something I forgot for ages, is the fact that if you put him in a different kind of tank, he gets different results. So if you put him in a Vanquisher or a basic Lehman Russ or a Demolisher, I think, he gets three roll hits. Which isn't that good because he's got old grudges. He's got preferred enemy anyway. The way the three, the three. Let's just not beat around the bush. Let's not talk about what he isn't in. Let's talk about what he should be in. So one, Vanquisher. That's your soft choice. That's your fluffy choice. It can work, okay? Don't because don't forget you you listen you re, you bet you almost you're practically twin linked. If you're shooting him at uh, his Vanquisher cannon at an enemy vehicle, it's two d six combined penetration. And you've got re-roll, re-roll that result. So, you know, you should let's say you're shooting that at a enemy tank, you're practically guaranteed to get a pen because you get to roll two to six added together. Oh, for some reason you didn't get the result you wanted, roll two to six and add it together again. And if you shoot something squishy, even if you shoot something like a riptide, you're shooting a strength eight shot. I think it's AP one or two. I think it's a melt again. So it's AP one. You're shooting that at a riptide. If you get a one on the wound, you've got for the enemy, so you roll it again, and so it doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter. So the Vanquisher is the soft choice because it's only ever going to do one thing. It's probably only going to do one whole point. It's almost fucking guaranteed to do one whole point, and it's almost fucking guaranteed to do one wound. 
but it is still but that's it it's it's you guarantee here's your one wound it's guarantee here's your one whole point one thing it is absolutely fantastic with here's a nasty little combo if you're going to go the vanquisher route give the tank the bodyguard tank a basic lehman rust cannon because then they're both strength eight and go transport hunting the amount of times that pask and his bodyguard tank when i've just been playing a nice sort of friendly game and i've just thrown uh those are a rhino every turn or a raise back every turn they always pop it but anyway the second choice second most competitive choice is you put him in the plasma variant tank i think it's the execution here uh now it, it used to be fantastic because you used to get five small blasts and only three and only two of them gets hot now with this new codex they all get hot and your preferred enemy no longer affects the get hots result so i think if you take all plasma all the way even with pask he's just going to glance himself to death you can buy an engine seer to babysit him and repair it and you can just you if he goes in a plasma tank he can do one large blast plasma cannon shot which is fucking awesome uh but you know you sort of haven't you have to play it safe with it no the number one choice for tank commanders if you're going to take a tank commander is you put up you put pask in a punisher because then he gets rending so you have 20 but it's skill four shots which are almost twin linked and then you get to try and rend with those but because you crack shot any that you fail to rend with you get a try again if you're shooting a vehicle how fantastic is that so 20 shots practically twin linked practically got tank hunter because of crack shot you know absolutely fantastic so bolt of, you know and then that's that's the way you want to roll it and an, an exterminator for his bodyguard just because you'll be probably if you're shooting vehicles to to rend and glance them to death with the pass punisher the exterminator bodyguard's better because it allows you to also target vehicles because if you take a second punisher that second punisher doesn't get the crack shot rule so they can't both try and rend things to death as easily okay so the last choice that we need to talk about quickly is the lord commissar okay so the lord commissar is what a lot of, a lot of you are probably going to say is a useless choice but he's actually really good but in a very specific circumstance okay so the lord commissar weapon skill five <laughs> that's pretty good in a guard army ballistic skill five that's fucking fantastic in a guard army and then basic guards and stats but attacks three and leadership ten comes with flak armor bolt pistol and don't forget this refractor shield refractor field five up invun really the amount of times the refractor field has saved my butt i can't tell you okay you accidentally get caught out in the open it's the enemy pours firepower after firepower into your blob it dies the commissar's left it has got three wounds He's got to make he's got to make three saves. Suddenly, they normally they they normally they just cut straight through your flak armor, even if it's bolters. Not anymore. Five up in one save. Don't forget that. Uh, aura of discipline. That means everyone around him who within six inches can use his leadership. Uh, stubborn and summary execution. We've already talked about these. So he is he is essentially a souped up normal commissar. Now the reason. I actually really like the Lord Commissar is because he's cheap. He is 65 points. And you can honestly, if you're playing if you're playing a low point game, if you're playing a thousand points or under, I should say if I'm playing a thousand points or under, I actually normally take a Lord Commissar. Maybe a thousand points, I'll take a company command squad. 750 points and below, I tend to take a Lord Commissar. Because he can just be taken. He is one of the few choices where you can take him basically bare bones, and he'll still do all right. He can actually, he'll still do all right. You know, he he is a budget HQ choice. Now, the the, the problem with the Lord Commissar is it can be very easy, very tempting just to pile on the upgrades. Let's give him sword of conquest the emperor's benediction bolt pistol carapace armor 
fucking uh, death matter on us pious bloody camo cloak something else something else metal bombs crack grenades or he's already got crack grenades but anyway you know what i mean like it's it, it can be very easy to, to be like i'm gonna make him a close combat beast and you know you can you can you'll end up spending more points on him than you did on bloody lord commissar yarrick or commissar yarrick okay the key to the lord commissar is to keep him is to give him one to two pieces of war gear and that's it now just because i have a model that i re really like the uh the, the model that i have i have a lord commissar with a power fist that's the only model i've painted that doesn't look like a child just dipped it in fucking glue basically i'm not the best painter but i have a lord commissar and i have this is my this is my fairly low budget lord commissar power fist Cafe Sama, that's it. Cafe Sama is a luxury. Don't often take it. I used to never use a Lord Commissar, and I'd say in the last 10 games that I've used him, I've just gone on a string of trying him out. He has every single game actually made a very decisive contribution. The key to him is to not try and make him able to take on other close combat units, because at the end of the day, he's still only toughness three, and he has the stat line that most fucking sergeants have in another army. He's nice. Nah, he's weapon skill 5. He's alright. What you'll find though is... Let's say there's like a squad of Skatari Vanguard. And you get into combat with them. The Lord Commissar quite easily... On his own or with 10 survivors from the squad. Because if you're going to get to Vanguard they're going to shoot to pieces. The Lord Commissar on his own can quite easily just punch the shit out of the Skatari and they won't damage him back because he they're he's hitting them on threes, they're hitting him on fours. He's hit he's wounding them on twos. They're wounding him on threes because of radiation. See what I mean? Like and he's got three wounds. But surprisingly, let's say you go in there and you know you'll find a squad of five to ten Skatari Vanguard. Another example, five to ten space marines. You know, what I'm saying here is if you send the Lord Commissar off to try and beat the shit out of a Wolfstar, he's going to get his face smashed in. If you send him off in a low point game, if you send him off, maybe, in a, you know, to try and take an enemy objective, he'll punch the shit out of whoever he gets there and, and win. But he's, again, he's not the A-star choice. Okay, he is a fun choice. In a low points game, where taking a bare bones company command squad would actually be a bad thing, it's quite good to take the Lord Commissar. One last honourable mention is here that all the Warlord traits are actually good for him. If you look at the Warlord traits, all the Warlord traits are much better suited to a Lord Commissar. So, very quickly, in terms of which ones I would rate, I would have company command squad at the top. Followed by Lord Commissar, then Tank Commander, then Commissar Yarrick. Okay? So, thank you for listening, and I hope to see you all next time.